Welcome to the DER 13 Arduino lab class. Um, as usual, we will see the previous class content. Then we will enter into the today's class. Okay. So in previous class, wait a minute. Yes, in previous class, we have discussed ultrasonic sensor. Uh, how to interface the ultrasonic sensor. We have seen two type of sensor. One is the three pin sensor, another one is the four pin sensor. Using these sensors, we made the uh, distance to measure, okay? So once you capable of measuring the distance, you can do n number of applications. Uh, simply any obstacle avoidance or uh, exact measurement. Likewise, you can choose your own application. Okay, so it has a n number of applications. The special advantage is non-contact measurement. So try to find a, the application for this one and try to implement in your projects. Okay, now we will get into the uh, actuators. SR gave the few introduction about the actuators. Here in Tinkercad, you have few actuators. It starts from vibration motor, simple DC motor, then DC motor with the encoder, then servo motor. Okay, so that's the servo motor and this vibration motor, this will come in special missions. Okay, uh, now in today's uh, class, we are going to see only the DC motor. So how to, how to interface the DC motor and we are going to do only three tasks. The, obviously, if you are having any actuator, you need to turn on and turn off your actuator based on your user command you need to do that okay so first dc motor on off control how to achieve on off control? simple on off control the second one how to vary the speed of the motor so speed control so if you take your uh, ceiling fan as a simple example that is not a dc motor anyhow let me take that uh, motor action if you enter into the hall, you need an on-off control, isn't it? That is the primary one. Then in between the um, in between the occasion, if you want to decrease the speed or increase the speed, you need a speed control. So these two things we are going to see in the first phase. Then we will see the direction control. Okay. Before that, before that, uh, we can't interface this DC motor straight away with our Arduino board. So I need to use on driver IC. Let me see a few points about this driver IC. Then we will see how to make the motor on and off and how to control the speed of the motor one by one. The very first one. So as we told already, uh, whenever you find any new device, uh, get the data sheet of the particular device. If you get the data sheet, they will give the features of the device then the application description likewise you are having a number of sections in your data sheet uh, okay let me do one thing um, how to read the data sheet we will go with the data sheet itself is it visible the data sheet it is in the pdf format uh, it is available in the website if you type uh, hello sir is it visible sir Yes, sir, visible, sir. Ah, yes, okay. See, so this is your data sheet. Say, in the, in the data sheet, very first, they will give their brand name. This is Texas Instrument. Okay. Uh, you know Texas City, where it is available. So the, the, this Texas Instrument, they were famous for many of the IC fabrication. They have a n number of ICs for dedicated application. This is the one of the IC. It is named as a, see, L two nine three X is the variable. Okay, here you will have some alphabets over there. Then quadruple half H drivers. You leave these terms at point at this point of time. You bother about only the driver. It is a simply a driver IC. What it is going to do? This driver IC is going to uh, interface high current rating devices with my microcontroller. It is going to help to interface high current rating devices. What are the devices? Please see here. For example, they're given stepper motor, DZ motor, and high current relays also, you can interface with the help of the driver IC. Okay. In this, you have two model. One is L290 and another one is L. 
E. So this data sheet is common for both the ICs. Therefore, only they given the variable name called X. Okay. So using this IC, we are going to enter today in our class. We are going to control this DZ motor. Okay. Before that, we will see the logic diagram. Please make a note of this logic diagram. Is it visible for everyone? So here they given only the input and output terminals. What are all the pin numbers available in the left hand side is the input terminal. What are all the pin numbers available in the out, uh, right hand side is the output terminals. Please make a note of it. It has four, four chips, four logic circuits within it. Therefore, the, the, due to that only they given it is a quadruple. Okay. There are four logic circuits. 1A, 1Y. 1A is the input of the first logic circuit. 1Y is the output of the first logic circuit. Then 2A and 2Y. 2A is the input. 2Y is the output. Can anyone type it in chat box? What is 3A and 4A? These two are input or output? 3A and 4A. Can anyone type it in chat box? 3A and 4. Very good. 3A and 4A are input. What about 3Y and 4Y? What about 3Y and 4Y? 3Y and 4Y are output terminals. Okay. So please rem keep remember. We are going to concentrate on four input, 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, and 1Y, 2Y, 3Y, 4Y. Okay, that's all. Then beyond that, you have a two more input terminals. One is called 1 comma 2 enable. Another one is called 3 comma 4 enable. What is this enable? Very simple. If you want to get the output from 1A, see if I am giving input from terminal number 1, yeah, I will get output in 1Y. If I gave input in 2A, I will receive output from 2Y. To enable this action, I need to make some logical input in this pin. Then only, based on the corresponding input, I will get the output. This is enable pin. This pin, pin number 1 is enable pin for these two inputs. What about pin number 9? Pin number 9 is the enable pin for 3 and 4. That's all. If you click this terminology, it is very simple to use this IC. Okay, this is my input terminal. This is my output terminal. Simply, A is the input terminal. Y is the output terminal. Okay, is it okay for you? Now, we will come to the pin diagram. Pin diagram of the particular IC. Can anyone type it in chat box? How many pins are available in this IC? How many pins are available? Can anyone type it in chat box? How many pins are available in this IC? There are 16 pins. Very good. 8 pins at left hand side, 8 pins at right hand side. So this is the pin number order. You need to start count the pin number from the left hand side top. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, the 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Okay. Now we will see what are all the known uh, pins for us, then we will see the other pins. Okay, first, can anyone identify what is 1 comma 2 enable? This 1 comma 2 enable is for to enable the 1 and 2 channel. To left hand side, uh, available channels are 1A and 2A. So to enable these two, I need to give some input to this enable pin. In the same way, right hand side, right hand side, I have 3 comma 4 enable pin. This enable pin is to enable the channel 3 and 4. That's all. So therefore, we have seen 5, this 3 plus 2, 5. This 3 plus 2, 5, totally 10 pins we have finished. Okay. What about the other pins? Please take down the label alone. The first one, VCC1. Please make a note of it. VCC1. Then... The second one is VCC2. So here you have a two VCC. I will tell you what for this two different voltage. So we need to give it in the IEC. First you note down VCC1 and VCC2. Then this 12, 13, 4 and 5 are ground pins. Please make If you find any IC, you must give the supply to the IC. For that, you will have the pin number called VCC and ground. 
in this special type of ic for ground they gave four pins please make a note of this four pins 3 13 12 and 5 these four pins are ground pins all the thing the summarize in the summary you can if you see the table this is your summary please come down here these are all the pin numbers in this you have a new column called type in this type i means input o means output okay i means input o means output so the pin number 1 2 7 10 15 find where are the terminals 2 this 7 10 15 these terminal are input terminals okay then what about y as we told already y are the output terminals y means output so 3 6 11 14 are output terminals that's all enable pins 1 and 9 are input terminals and also 1a 2a 3a 4a are input terminals then 1y 2y 3y 4y are output terminals that's all uh basically no. here input output refers to the particular ic, IC yes yes uh, this is this is the for ic is concerned this input and output okay you don't compare with your microcontroller then what are the remaining pins as we discussed earlier we have a two vcc see vcc1 and vcc2 please make note of these two things the vcc1 5 volt supply for internal logic translation very simple this 5 voltage to power this chip to operate this ic i need to give a operating voltage of 5 volt dc so this is to energize your ic chip okay the vcc1 with respect to ground terminal if i give 5 volt i can activate my chip then what about the vcc2 this is a very interesting one please find the range of voltage in this particular pin vcc2 in this pin number 8 i can give the supply from 4.5 volt to 36 volt why this much wide range means this is the operating voltage in which you are going to activate your external hardware that means your solenoid your dc motor or your servo motor that external device specification you need to check accordingly you need to power this pin it is a wide range it is from 4.5 to 36 please make a note of these voltage levels then we will go step by step so only two voltage levels one is to energize the chip the another one is to activate your actuator so actuator voltage is have wider range based on your actuator range i can use this now now we will go little down what they given so see the second thing it's very very important once you know the voltage rating immediately you must note down your current rating of the chip see this l293 ic capable of delivering maximum of 1 ampere 1 ampere what about L two nine three D. This is the chip. What we have it in Tinker Cat. This one we are going today. We are going to use it. This continuous output current. This continuous output current of L two nine three D is six hundred milliampere. If I load the chip beyond this current rating, my IC will get damage. So, if you recollect the voltage level to operate the chip, I need to give five volt DC supply. Then VCC two based on the actuator I can choose the voltage that is from four point five volt to thirty six volt four point five volt to how much it is see here four point five volt to thirty six volt then current rating you no need to confuse with the two current ratings you note down only six hundred milliampere that's all so by the way I know what are all the pin configurations and what are all the important parameters i need to note down from the data sheet then then how to connect and how to get the output how to see 
you have n number of circuit diagrams we will see only this functional block diagram please observe the functional block diagram step by step only we are going to discuss the functional block diagram now i am going to show only this one see you 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 concentrate only on this side this motor you have here actually three motors they have shown how to interface the different configurations here we are going to discuss only this configuration see consider only this motor it is a dc motor it is a dc motor the negative terminal of the dc is permanently connected to the ground okay so permanently i connected to the ground when i give logical height to this positive terminal my motor will start rotate in clockwise direction please make note of it if i give logical high in this pin that means pin number 14 if pin number 14 delivers logic high my motor will start rotate to get the logical high what i have to do please see this logic diagram if i give logic 1 this pin in the pin number 15 it will produce the logic output high in pin number 14 In the same way, if I give logic zero in the fifteenth pin, it will produce logic zero in fourteenth pin. It's very simple. If you give logic one, it will also produce logic one. If you give logic zero, it will produce logic zero. Okay. In this idea, with this idea, we are going to start give the. गजनन वो रीम शादी आ रहा था कुंचो आदत पे अंदर अंदर स्क्रीन एक अच्छा अंदर इन काटी लगा मैं सर नहीं नहीं अंदर पार्ट पर्टिकुलर वाले इप्पर काटची नहीं आ प्रोजेक्ट में आ Uh, see here uh, why we have to give it at pin 15 we could have directly connected to the motor right then why you need this component if it is going to give logic high here it is going to give high here right um, why we have to give it is uh, this increases the current driving capability the component which does is this right so you get a better current driving capacity capability Uh, that is why we give it here 15 and 4 take it out from 14 right uh, otherwise we would have directly given this to the motor right because arduino cannot supply that much current we are giving it through pin number 15 then it comes to 14 right uh, that will come only if this enable signal is the only if this if this particular component is enabled that is done by the enable pin right um there are too many things in it uh, you may not be knowing all these things but let's understand if you you have to connect to 15 from the arduino and take it from 14 and connect it to the motor okay guys then proceed yes please. see the last one please consider the table please consider this table what about a a and enable pins are input pins and why is the output pin please make note of this table if i make logical high in pin number a and also i enabled the pin with the logic high i will get the output in y as same logic high so that means 1 1 gives the output as 1 and second case please observe Rem my enable pin is remains high in the state if i give the logic low in the a i will attain logic low in the output terminal also okay the third one see the x is nothing but don't care condition that you will study later okay so it is it may be high or low any logic level if i make the enable pin into low my output will be in the high impedance state please note down this term alone this terms you will study in detail first two is very important the third one you will come to know very uh, later sessions okay for very simple in all the cases i need to enable the pin to logic high that is point number 1 point number 2 based on the logical output i want accordingly i need to give the input in number pin number a a is nothing but it may be 1a 2a 3a or 4a why i have four channels in that okay similarly y means it may be 1y 2y 3y or 4y it is applicable for all the 
input and output pins please make note of this table with this uh, help of this table only we are going to uh, do that today's exercise okay i hope you may taken this uh, if you I'll, i'll take the screenshot of this image now we will get into the lab portion what we are going to do it means it's the very first one the very first one what i am going to do see in this diagram i skipped all the power pins and uh, unused pins i removed it the vcc1 vcc2 ground everything i removed it only the motor interfacing connection i have given how we are going to interface this chip with our arduino and the motor alone please see here this is a dc motor dc motor has two terminals one is ground i have connected the ground pin permanently to the ground and the plus terminal i have connected to the output terminal of my driver ic okay so if i give logical one in this pin what will happen to my motor my motor will start rotating one direction okay if i give logic zero in the same pin i can i will turn off my motor very simple if i give logic one my mo I, i can see if i give logic one in this see if i give logic one in this pin logic one in this pin i will receive logic one in the output terminal thereby my motor will start rotate instead of that if i pass logic zero in the pin i will receive the logic level as zero so ground and zero there is no potential difference my motor won't rotate okay very simple so for that uh, for that what i need to do i need to configure my uh, arduino pin accordingly and i need to create the logical level okay based on the logical level i can control this motor to on and off okay to on make the pin to high if i want to off the led make the pin to low in the same way the same blinking program if you write your motor will start run okay start stop start stop it will happen okay see this but i need a on off control so how to achieve the on off control if i want on off control means i need to interface one input device as a switch so this is my switch with the help of the switch i am going to give the command to the microcontroller if once i give the command to the controller based on my input command if my button is in on condition i will produce logic high in my output terminal thereby this logic i will fed into 1a it will produce the logical high in my 1y thereby my motor will start rotate what me the other logic if i make the switch in off condition off condition i will give logic zero in this pin thereby i will produce logic zero in the output terminal that output zero will fed into the 1a accordingly my 1y output will change it into zero thereby my motor won't rotate okay please see the video animation then we will wait a minute how you are going to control this yes wait a minute please watch this video so now my motor is in off condition it is zero rpm once i made the switch to on please observe the motor please observe the motor it rotates with the full speed here it is 373 rpm so if i make the switch to off immediately my motor will come to 0 rpm that is nothing but stop so in this way we are going to we are going to interface interface this ic 
with our Arduino board. Then, based on the logical input, we are going to create the motor to on and off. Okay. Come to the Tinkercad. Come to the Tinkercad. Go to new circuit. Go to new circuit. Go to new circuit. So motor is the, even though it is an actuator, here you will find the motor in the output device. Okay. Motor also, a out, it is also a output device. The special category is called actuator. Okay. So select all, select all components and go to output category. Go to output category. Yes, in that we are going to see here you are having different type of motors, vibration motor, vibration motor, then DZ motor, DZ motor with the encoder, then DZ motor with the encoder is another type, then micro servo, then micro servo. In that we are going to take this DZ motor. Okay, so. There are two terminals. So whenever you take the new component, find the identify the terminals. One is the positive terminal, another one is negative terminal. How to power this? For that, let me take the separate power supply unit. We'll take the power supply unit. See, simply now we are going to test the motor. How we are going to connect it means positive terminal of the power supply straight away to the positive terminal. Okay, then negative terminal, I am going to take the negative terminal and I am going to connect to the negative terminal. That's all. This is a simple connection, how to test my motor. So what is the operating voltage of this motor? See, D, for particular this DC motor, we are going to give only maximum of 12 volt. I will tell you why we have limited to 12 volt. Start the simulation and check. By default, it is 5 volt. Let me reduce the voltage to 0. Find the RPM. See, here you can find the shaft here. From left and right hand side, we'll find the shaft. Whenever I start rotate, I giving the voltage, please observe the shaft rotation also. See? Can you view the rotation of the shaft? And also the RPM. So the revolution per minute is printed over here and also the animation, please observe the shaft rotation. If I increase the voltage, what happens? If I increase the voltage, what happens? The speed of the motor increases, okay? It is very simple, as I told already, to run the motor, to run the motor, see, simply you give the supply. On means on, off. If I, if I make the supply to off, it will become zero RPM. It will become zero RPM. Off means zero, on means, maximum rpm this is simple on off control okay how to vary the speed see if i simply increase the voltage rpm getting increases isn't it isn't it why we are going to keep 12 volt here means see if i give 12 volt if i give exactly 12 volt in this rps please observe the current drawn by the motor it is it is 555 milliampere actually our driver IC capable of delivering only 600 milliampere. Okay, for the purpose, I am going to give the maximum voltage of 12 volt this to this motor. Okay, if I give beyond this, see, motor won't get damaged, but it will draw more current. This current may damage your driver IC. Therefore, I am going to limit the motor current, sorry, motor current by reducing the input voltage if you buy any motor from the market they will give two specific three specification one is the voltage rating second one is the current rating third one is the speed of the motor by finding these parameters you can use it for your own application that's all stop the simulation now can anyone tell how to reverse the direction of the motor can anyone type it in chat box how to change the direction of the motor simply how i can change the direction of the motor can you type it in chat box direct gajendra na thirupi nam paapam gajendra na yes sir 
இங்க இந்த பிளஸ் மைனஸ் பிளஸ் மட்டும் மாத்தி காட்டிலான்னு பார்த்தேன் சார் 1 hour தான் இருக்கு பெரிய இந்த ஓகே சார் எஸ் யூ will do one thing changing the polarity of terminal yes yes that is our second session that we will see so simply if you change the plus minus motor will start rotate in the reverse direction okay now you come to the exercise what are the things i need to do i need to bring the arduino first i need to bring the arduino then then breadboard breadboard so what are the input devices i need to interface here one switch input input device is the switch by reading the status of the switch i need to produce the logical output from my controller okay yes yes keep your arduino do you know here then your breadboard breadboard then what else we need we need few more components what are all the components we need we need a switch on off control switch go to input and also i need a pull down resistor to interface the switch take the switch then yes then last one is the driver ic from where we will take the driver ic go to see go to power see here you will find power control power control in the power control if you go down you will get the driver ic that's all okay so now we are going to give the connections one by one first we will do one thing we will connect the connect the slide uh, input switch first then we will start give the driver ic okay the known one we will finish first so what is the value of pull down resistor it is 10 kilo ohm 10 kilo ohm 10 kilo ohm so here what we are going to do we are going to use the pin number 2 as an input pin and 3 as the output pin okay so pin number 2 before that let me power the arduino board take 5 volt supply take 5 volt take 5 volt that's all then ground the same 5 volt supply we can use it for the use it to power our driver chip also the same 5 volt supply we can use it to power our driver chip also okay yes mm, that's all now another terminal of the switch i need i am going to connect it in logic high then this one end of the rest i am going to connect in pull down configuration therefore logic low now from this switch output i am going to connect it in pin number 2 so by reading the status of this particular pin we are going to produce the output okay so the output pin is i am going to use pin number 3 before that let me finish the driver ic connection diagram then we will come to the input terminal okay how to connect see as we as we shown in the circuit diagram as we shown in the circuit diagram the negative terminal of the dc motor negative terminal of the dc motor straight away i am going to connect it to the negative terminal of the power supply so negative straight away we connected to the motor okay then the positive terminal see this power unit is vcc2 
please remember this is your this is your vcc2 then whatever the voltage we are receiving from the arduino is the vcc1 okay so the vcc1 is 5 volt okay vcc1 is 5 volt the vcc2 is 12 volt why 12 volt the operating voltage of the motor i am going to set as a 12 volt therefore my vcc2 is 12 volt so vcc1 see if we find the terminal see if you bring the cursor nearby your ic chip you will find the power pin this is your power 1 power 1 is nothing but vcc1 power 2 this is pin number power 2 power 2 is nothing but vcc2 now i am going to power the power 1 pin with the help of 5 volt dc supply so 5 volt dc is available in the breadboard let me take the same power supply so i have connected with power 1 is connected to vcc1 vcc1 that is nothing but 5 volt dc okay the vcc2 is 12 volt take the 12 volt supply see these two are two different voltage levels we are going to use it hereafter you should know you, you, you should not connect this vcc2 with the same vcc1 it will damage your whole circuit vcc2 separately you need to root and you need to connect it in the only the input terminal of the ic alone see this is your second power pin you must connect the vcc2 in only in this pin don't make contact with the VCC1, then it will damage your system. Okay, so VCC2, 12 volt, we have connected. Then what are all the other pins? If you if you compare your circuit diagram, if you compare your circuit diagram, 1A, 1Y, and enable. Only these three pins I need to connect. Okay, so enable pin, as per our earlier discussion, enable pin, I am going to make it into logic high permanently then then 1a from the arduino port pin from the arduino port pin i am going to connect 1a then 1y simply i am going to connect it to the another end of my dc motor only these three connections are pending come back here come back here we will give one by one see this is my enable pin enable pin i am going to straight away connect it to vcc so permanently i am going to make the pin into logic high even you can program this pin with the help of one more digital output pin if you if in the program itself you can enable and disable if you want to do that control you can use one more digital pin so here what we did simply we made the enable pin to logic high then 1a this is 1a input 1 is nothing but 1a this 1a we are going to connect it to the pin number 3 of our Arduino. Pin number 3 of our Arduino board. So take pin number 3 and connect it to 1A. Yes, that's all. One year. Okay, so one year is finished. What about the one output terminal? This is my one Y. Take another wire from the one Y terminal and connect it to the positive terminal of your DC motor. That's all. So this, this is 12 volt supply. We are going to receive it from the chip. Please go through the circuit diagram once. This is the input switch. So based on the logic level, I'm going to read the status in pin number two. Then accordingly, I'm going to create the logical output in pin number three. Thereby, I'm going to give the input to my driver IC pin number one A. Then based on the logic, it will produce the logical output in one Y. Okay, and one more thing, whenever you use an inductive load with the any uh, digital ICs, you need to connect one freewheeling diode across it. So play, please take one more diode. Please take one more diode. 
and connect it in reverse bias very simple this is my cathode anode terminal anode terminal you connected to the negative of the battery then cathode terminal you have connected to the positive terminal of the battery that's all so now we will start write the program yes what are all the pin numbers i need to configure please help me the first one the first one is the control switch first one is the control switch this is my control switch control switch where we have connected we have connected in pin number 2 the control switch pin number 2 then what is the second one is the output terminal so the output terminal is pin number 3 so let me make it as the same terminal number as motor 1a for better understanding pin number 3 that's all can anyone tell what will be the mode of operation of the control switch whether it will be a input or output it's very good since it is a switch it is an input so i am going to configure the mode of the pin as input then what about the motor 1a motor 1a whether it is a input or output is anyone type it in chat box yes it's a output so output make the pin to act as a output pin that's all then immediately create the logic low in the particular pin by default by default make the motor 1a terminal as logic low that's all now what we need to do i need to read the status of the logic from the pin number 2 so as usual as usual we are going to read the read the control switch status we are going to read the control switch status we are going to read the control switch status what is the syntax i need to use to read the digital logic level is a digital read of digital read of the name of the pin we have declared as a control switch so please observe i am going to read the status of the control switch read the status of the control switch and i am going to store it in the particular variable name called control switch status then what i need to do i need to ch check the logical change for that i need to write some conditional statement what conditional statement we are going to use it here simply if else condition statement is sufficient okay see if my switch is in on condition if my switch is in on condition what i need to type can anyone type it in chat box if if my control switch status is if my control switch status equal to equal to 1 what must be the logical output can anyone type it in chat box can anyone type it in chat box else what i need to type that's all the program finished if you type the logical level we can use it what i need to type is anyone type it in chat box yes ah uh, very good digital right off digital right off motor 1a comma high very good see if my switch is in on condition turn on the motor how to turn on the motor if for motor 1a by default it is logic low if i make the pin to logic 1 i am going to type the command called motor 1a logic high that's all else else what i need to do simply simply i need to make the pin to logic low that's all it's like a interfacing switch and led same concept same logic we have used here only the thing is the hardware unit is different okay now we will start simulate the program go through the program once control switch then motor uh, the driver input terminal then i have configured the terminal as a input driver pin as output by default driver pin logic low then read the status of the control switch if my switch is on condition turn on the motor turn on the motor turn on the motor else turn off it all of them now we will check the output start simulate start simulate 
and observe the output. Yes. See, please observe. Please observe here. Um, see, here, even though my switch is in off condition, it rotates with two RPM. Why this mistake means? Here I am using two different sources. This terminal, the ground terminal of the, these two sources not kept in the same potential. For that, what I need to do, whenever you use two different sources, make the ground terminal as the common. Then only the logical level works correct okay make the ground terminal as the common terminal for these two sources now you start simulate and absorb connect both grounds together together now you check both the grounds have to be connected together yes see we did one mistake the ground terminus we didn't wired in this. See the ground terminal, ground terminals are these two. These two you need to connect it with the loop. Then you need to connect the ground terminal here. So the ground terminal, as for this IC is concerned, you have four ground terminals. All the four ground terminals I need to ground. All the four ground terminals I need to ground. That's all. Now you start simulate. Exactly zero RPM. Please observe the output. Zero. Now I make the switch to on. See? The maximum speed is 373 RPM. Isn't it? If I turn off the switch, turn off the switch, it will become zero RPM. So in this way, I can have the on-off control. On-off control. The second one, the second task, I need to do the speed control. How I can give the uh, variable input to my system? So it is a very simple configuration. If you interface, if you interface on potentiometer, see this is my potentiometer. I'm going to interface the potentiometer as an analog input to my system based on this analog input, as like our light dimmer or fan, and this fan speed control dimmer, if you vary the knob of the fan regulator, the speed of the motor will vary. In the same way, if I change the knob position of the potentiometer, my speed of the motor will get changed. If I keep the potentiometer in minimum position, motor will be in off condition. If I bring the potentiometer in the maximum condition, motor will start rotate with the maximum RPM. Come back, we will do this small modification in our hardware circuit as well as the program portion then we will attain the logical change in the output come down let me take the one more mini breadboard because if i keep the potentiometer there it will not be looks good yes i'll take a potentiometer very simple by the time you think about your program portion, what you need to do, bring the breadboard little down. So the one end of the terminal, I'm going to connect it to the ground. One end of the terminal, I need to I'm going to connect it to the ground. That's all. Then another end, I need to connect it to 5 volt supply. Yes, 5 volt supply. The output terminal, the wiper arm. The wiper arm, I can connect it to any one of the analog input pin. Let me consider A5 as an output terminal in this case. That's all. So this is my wiper arm minimum position. This is maximum position. Now we will start write the 
coding portion come to the program what i need to do here in this initial stage i need to include one more pin number in part value okay the potentiometer i'm going to connect it in pin number a5 that's all then the same pin i need to configure it as an input pin so configure your analog input pin as a input pin configure your analog pin value as an input input then by default by default my motor 1a is remains low nothing no change in that only the loop i need to in the loop section i need to make the change see see here uh, same logic see whenever i turn on the switch my fan will start rotate in that condition if i change the potentiometer value the speed of the motor will vary in the same way i am going to do see up to this the condition is okay i am going to read the status of my switch once i read the status of the switch if it is in logic high i will turn on the motor this alone i am going to change i am not going to turn on the motor i am going to change i am going to give the input to the motor according to my potentiometer read value for that i what i need to do i need to read one more one more input value that is nothing but my pot value let me read the second variable also we read the second variable also that is my pot value read the pot value it is not so uh, it is not a digital read now i need to make the little changes analog read since i have connected in analog pin i need to change the syntax as analog read then the pin the name is called pot so here i am going to read two things the one is the simple switch the second one is my potentiometer value then once i read the value i am going to i am going to map with some variable then that variable i am going to use it to write my logical output so i am going to map the value i am going to map the value see the maximum output i can receive from the pin number 2 if i use the pin number 3 sorry pin number 3 in pwm mode the maximum count will be 0 to 255 0 to 255 but the analog read count value is 0 to 1023 for that i need to map it so pwm value is the new variable i am a pwm duty cycle so duty cycle is a new variable i am going to map with i am going to map with this pot value pot value what is the pot value pot value is the in, uh, analog input value the from and to values are 0 to 1023 nothing but 0 to 5 volt then what is the output from and to value the output from and to values are 0 to 255 that's all okay then if my switch is in on condition if my switch is in on condition based on this potentiometer position i need to pass the value for that what i can do simply i can write the command as analog write it is not digital write it is an analog write of analog write of the same pin number motor 1a motor 1a comma this new variable called pwm duty cycle what about the else part else part else part remains same i can either keep it as a digital write motor 1 comma low or otherwise analog write of motor 1 comma low both will serve the same function okay now i am going to start run the program start run the program come back here observe this see now my motor is with 0 rpm connection lost wait a minute sir is it visible sir hello 
Sir? Yes, good day, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Si. Wait a minute, stop. Connection last. Yes. Sir, the tinker card motor connect tag or I am saying, sir. Idhula motor connection last no varathu. Screen the sir. Sir, screen the sir. Sir, screen the sir. Sir, screen the Okay. Sir, screen the sir. Sir, screen the sir. Sir, screen the sir. Sir, the sir. Sir, the sir. the motor RPM remains zero. Why? Since my potential meter position is a minimum position, it is zero RPM. Now I am gradually, I am going to increase the value of the potential meter. Please observe. Please observe. Please observe the speed of the motor. It is only around 100 RPM because my potentiometer is not with the maximum position. Let me change it to maximum position. Let me change the potentiometer value to maximum position and observe here. Yes, it is 100 percentage. Okay, if I keep it in 75 percentage of the potentiometer, I will get the 75 percentage of the speed. If I keep it in 50 percentage, I will get 50 percentage. Likewise, you can vary the, you can control your speed of the motor. Okay, by at the same time, you need to check the on-off control. On-off control also must. See, if I make the switch in off, motor is 0 RPM. If I turn on the motor, it runs with the RPM according to your analog input value. That's all. We are going to add two switches. One is for on off control, another one is for direction control. Very simple. Okay. If my switch is in off condition and my switch is in actually by default, I am going to keep it as in clockwise direction. If I change the position, it will come back to anti clockwise direction. This is to select the direction, this is to control your motor on and off. Okay. So, in this way, we are going to interface two switches and one more thing is so so far we have uh, used only one way terminal as the output terminal as are told already here we are not going to connect the negative terminal to the state of a ground we are going to connect the another end to the another output terminal name called two way okay so accordingly if you pass the logic in these two wires one a and two way you can make the direction of the motor to rotate in your desired direction. Okay, now we will do one thing. We'll start do the connection one by one. So the same setup, the same setup. I'm going to include only one more switch that is for direction control. Very simple. See, again, the same pull down configuration we will keep for the resistor. If my switch is in off condition, that alone you need to remember. Okay, if my switch is in off condition, consider it as one direction. That is your clockwise direction. If my switch is turned on, make it as a counterclockwise direction or anticlockwise direction. Okay, I need to pull down this resistor. So let me connect it to ground here. Let me connect it to ground. Then from this terminal connected to any one of the digital input pin. Any one of the digital input pin. Let me use the pin number four as an another input. Okay, then then another end of the switch I need to connect it into logic high. Make it into logic. That's all. Thereby 
switch connection is over. So see, the one end of the resistor pull down configuration, therefore it is in ground. Then the common terminal is connected to the one end of the digital input terminal. Then as usual, the middle terminal is connected to VCC. So consider this term, this position as the clockwise direction. Okay, this terminal has the clockwise direction. This is as the counterclockwise direction. That's all. Now you come down. What are all things I need to change? As I told you, I need to remove this ground terminal. I need to re remove this ground terminal. This negative terminal, I need to connect it in the second output. So this is, see, this is first output, output that is, uh, one Y, this is two Y. So take another output, two Y, two Y. Two Y. That's all, okay. Then, so, Already we have a already we have a input terminal name called one A. Already we have connected. Likewise, I need to make two A also to work. So this is input two, because now we are going to give two logical levels for the chip. One is to make the output in one Y terminal. Another to make the output in two Y terminal. For that, you take one more terminal from the chip. That is your that is your two A. Connect the 2A in any one of the digital pin. Let me connect it in terminal number 5. That's all. That's all. So what are the changes we made? Please observe here. We add one we added one more switch. So switch is very simple. What is the input pin alone? I need to remember. So that is pin number. That is my pin number 4. That is pin number four is for direction control. Then pin number two is for on off control. Then what are all the output pins for the driver chip? One is pin number three, another one is pin number five. Okay, so accordingly, uh, based on the switch position of these two, I need to create the direction of the my motor output. So come to our program portion. What are the changes we need to do? The new things alone, we will add one by one. The first one, the first one is the direction control switch we have added. So add the direction control switch, DAR. So the direction control switch we have connected in pin number four. Is it visible? Yes. Now, the second, then, 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 Motor output 1A already we have used. Now I need to include 1, 2, 2A also I need to include. So include 2A, 2A in pin number 5. This is in pin number 5. So uh, the part value I know I'm not going to bother. Now the logic level, please remember, please remember if my switch is in, you will write the logic level by one by one see if my switch is in on condition say example if my switch is in on condition and this switch is in off condition please note down the logic if my switch is in on state if my direction switch is in off state i need to rotate the motor in clockwise direction isn't it so if my switch is in on if my uh, direction switch is in off, I need to make the motor to rotate in clockwise direction. For that, we will write the logic first. Come back here. Pin mode, little bit we need to finish. What we need, we have added new. The direction switch we have added. So let me configure that one first. Direction control. Direction control. That is also an input pin. Then what else? Then. 2A is the another output pin for the driver IC. So make the 2A pin also a output pin. 2A also a output pin. By default, you keep both the things into logic low. Both the things into logic low by default. 
that's all so motor one motor two now i need to read the status of the two switches one is on off control on off control this is on off control so there is no change in this on off control the new one is direction control so for that let me add one more line direction control to modify this as direction control so simply direction so now i am going to read the direction control switch from the direction switch pin okay so dar that's all once you finish these two things remaining program is very simple so this is for direction that's all now you come to the logical logic portion see let me remove this one let me remove this one see what logic we need to write please observe see if i if i if i send logic 1 in 1a one and logic 0 in 2a the motor will start rotating clockwise direction see if i send 1 one way will produce the one volt the logic high then if i send logic 0 in 2a 2y also produces logic level as 0 thereby i will get the 12 volt supply across the motor my motor will start rotating clockwise direction okay at the same time if i give 0 1 means it will reverse the logic as 0 1 in this way it will rotate in reverse direction this is the second logic i need to produce the last logic if i pass 0 0 in these two pins it will produce my motor to off so first we are going to make the first logic if my switch is in on condition and direction control switch in off state i need to make these two logical level in my pin now come back we will create the logical change in the pin accordingly if my see this is my control switch that if my control switch is in on state and and i'm going to add the and logic with this in this and logic i am going to check the two switch status one is simple con uh, the on off control switch the second one is the direction control switch if my direction control switch is in logic zero i need to start rotate my motor in clockwise direction what i need to do i need to rotate my motor in clockwise direction to make my motor to rotate in clockwise direction I need to pass some logical values in my digital output pins. That means in motor 1A terminal, I need to pass the logic value as 1. At the same time, in motor 2A terminal, in motor 2A terminal, I need to pass the logical level value as 0. That's all. That's all. Now you can start write the remaining things by your own. Please tell you this is if my switch is in on condition as well as my direction control switch is in off state. Therefore, I am making the motor to rotate in clockwise direction. Else if, else if, what we have to do? Else if, else if, what may be the second condition? What may be the second condition? The per exactly exactly opposite of my previous condition that is the switch state remains one only the direction switch state i need to change it as one that means if i make the direction control switch position from off position to on position it will come to counterclockwise direction thereby okay, I have yeah. off yes, on to the, we are changing the direction control to clockwise and anti-clockwise because off on the, the, yes, the uh, clockwise more to clockwise and anti-clockwise yes. so clockwise and counterclockwise position see the actually off position is the clockwise position on position is the counterclockwise position okay so clock clockwise position if i keep my switches in clockwise position and my uh, main control switch in on i will make the motor to rotate in clockwise direction else what i need to do i need to make the motor to rotate in opposite direction that is nothing but counter clockwise direction for that very simple very simple what i need to do 
instead of one, I need to make the logic level into zero in one year terminal. In two year terminal, I need to make it into one. That's all. Else, else what I need to do? Else what I need to? I need to stop my motor. Can anyone uh, help me? What logic I need to write in this loop? Can anyone type it in chat box? What I need to do? Can anyone type it in chat box? Yes, very good. I need to pass 0, 0 or 1, 1. I need to pass 0, 0, 0 in 1 year terminal, 0 in 2 year terminal. Or else 1 in 1 year terminal or 1 in 2 year terminal. The Both the thing will make your motor to stop, rotate. Okay. Let me check the let me check the logical output. Please go through the program once. That's all. Uh, we have included two switches. One is for direction control. Another one is for on off control. Then based on the switch control, based on the switch control, we are going to make the logical change. One is clockwise direction. Another one is counterclockwise direction. The last one to stop the motor. Now I'm going to start simulate this one. Somewhere if if pot value is yes, somewhere the pot variable present. Yes, this one we will remove it. This alone we will uncomment. That's all. Yes. Now we have come here. Now my now my switch conditions are my switch is in off state, and I kept the direction control switch in clockwise direction. If I make the motor to rotate, see, let's let me make it to forward direction. My motor rotates. Okay, so forward direction you can observe in two way the shaft animation as well as this value. If it is in and a positive value, it will be the clockwise direction. How to change the direction of the motor? Simply, I am going to change the switch position. Please observe if I change the switch position immediately, immediately it start rotates in start rotates with very low value minus 25 rpm not with the exact value the, the the problem with this is we should not use the flywheel uh, freewheel diode in this way if you are using two but dual direct we need to connect the freewheeling diode in a different mode that circuit diagram we will share with you now simply i'm going to remove the freewheeling diode and start run the simulation Now I'm going to turn on the system. I'm going to turn on the system. See forward direction, three double four RPM. I'm going to change the direction. See minus three double four. Please observe. So negative symbol use the indication that now it is rotates in counterclockwise direction. Okay. Please observe the shaft animation. That is also white in color. You may not view it properly. So in this way, you can do the direction control also. Okay. So on off control. Again, on off control is achieved. If I make the switch to off, it will turn off. If I made the switch to on, it will get on. So according to the direction switch position, I can make the direction to change. That's all. So by default, I am going to keep it in clockwise direction. It will start rotating clockwise direction. That's all. Uh, take down the today's task. Take down the today's task. So design and implement temperature controlled 12 volt cooling fan. See here you don't have a cooling fan. Take the same DC motor and do your task. Okay. So temperature controlled 12 volt cooling fan. And also you need to display the two parameters. One is the speed of the motor. Another one is the temperature. What you have measured. These two things.